Hey, this is Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the Unrehearsed Research Series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. You might learn from the big strategy or from features in the tools, or if you see a better way to do it, please leave a comment so we can all learn. Now on to the research. Okay, welcome to episode 20. I just wanted to let you know that if you'd like James and I to look at your family research, we'd be happy to do that. You could either come on the call and be on Zoom with us, or you could just send us your family information and we can look at it, uh, the two of us. So if you're interested in that, please email me at richard at goldiemay.com. Okay, so today we're going to look at a family member of mine, Henry Dotson. This is my fourth great grandfather. And uh, this research takes us to the south of the United States. So James, I thought I would just get you introduced to this and we can go from here. This is a somewhat end of line situation for me where uh, the father of Henry, Thomas Dotson, has one source and that's just a little more tentative. And so we're looking at, you know, living in Georgia, several children there. And then if we look at sources to see mention of his father, I, I don't think there's, if I remember correctly, a name mention of his father. But in the 1880 census, it mentions that his father was born in Virginia. So, so what are we missing here? Henry has census records for 1880, 70, 60, 50, but he was born in 1820. So we don't have an 1840 or 30 census record for him in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, this region they're living in. So, you know, there's that we could find maybe living with his father, but then even going back further, apparently his father was from Virginia. So there's, uh, you know, there's, there's really no connection to Virginia except that one record. So that's what we have so far. I'll just kind of turn it over to you, James, to take it where you'd like to go. Okay. Well, this brings up a very, very common migration pattern. So we think he was born in North Carolina. Why do we think we he was born in North Carolina? Okay, this is the son, and we have more on him. So I think if we were just to look through these various census records, they show up birthplace yeah, oh, in North says, Carolina. So he yeah. says he was born in North Carolina at the census. Yep. That's yeah. Okay, that kind of confirms the pattern. Uh, the other thing would be he was in Georgia. Uh, looks like from the, from the Civil War Confederate side of the Civil War, rather than you know, and even as early as eighteen fifty, he's in Georgia. So okay, so he came down. That's, he came before. Yeah. Okay. One thing that I'd like to check real quick, if you'll go up and do a search, is look for Georgia land grants from seventeen eighty. Yeah, head right and bounty, not bounty. No, the first hmm. one up there was actually the one. It's up there, John. Wiki that, page. That should tell you. Okay. It's on the wiki, but it was a fast way to get to it. Mm -hmm. um, see up here where it says Georgia Land Lottery. Yep. In the, yeah, in the middle of all that. Okay, here's here's what happened. People who were born in Virginia, the main problem was that they had the primogenitor ruling on land. So when a man who owned a bunch of land died, the oldest son got all the land period. And the rest of the sons were sort of, well, have a nice day. Uh, occasionally they would get some personal property or maybe a small piece of land if they had a separate piece or whatever, but most of the time they didn't. And as they, as things happened, Georgia in that time period when there were starting to be more mobile, decided to give away a lot of land free. Hmm. So they created what was called the Georgia Land Lottery in 1827, and I just wanted to make sure of the date. And what happens is that you see this migration south. So people pick up from Virginia and move to North Carolina. And then they say, well, wait a minute, we can get free land down in Georgia. So they, hmm. the next thing they know, they're down in Georgia. Generally speaking, if they weren't large, large landowners, in other words, owned plantations and had a bunch of slaves, they would... Um, run out of land in about six to seven years. In other words, the main two crops, of course, were cotton and um, tobacco. And so mm -hmm. both of those crops are heavily nitrogen users rather, and they didn't have any concept at all of uh, rotation of crops or fertilizing or anything. So by about the sixth or seventh year, the, the 
production land dropped off, so they would start moving west. And many of these people ended up in Texas, <laughs> ultimately. Hmm. So you have this kind of flow of people constantly during the mid-1800s from south from Virginia until the Civil War. After the Civil War, then, of course, everything kind of changed, but they were already there and they'd already fought the war. Uh, and they still ran out of land, and so they were still travel west. But there hmm. wasn't so much movement south from Virginia down through North Carolina. That's There's the summary right there of everything that happens. So what you do is you have to kind of back up through there. And I have in the past traced people from Texas to Arkansas to Miss across Mississippi and Alabama to, to Georgia up the coast to, to South and North Carolina and finally end up in Georgia, in Virginia. Hmm. So very so, predictable, well, apparently. Yeah. I mean, it's you just have to rec recognize that, that this is where you're going to be looking for records. And sequentially, the records are going to be either, depending on which direction you're researching, up or down. You know, if you're doing descendancy hmm. research or ascendancy research, you start with wherever they happen to be. And in this case, you go north because they came down through North Carolina and Virginia. Very good. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not impossible because there are a lot of records. Um, there's not as many records as you would think. So the first records you want to start with are the latest records. So if he ended up in Georgia, you want to look at his land records and if we look at the res at his sources, let's just see if anything has been found already. Okay, okay, so here, yeah, yeah. Are you saying the sun? I'm land and property records. Oh, land and property. Sun, okay. The sun, the one that yeah, ends up yeah. in Georgia. Yeah. Okay, let's see. No, I don't see any. No. Yeah. Okay, so hmm. that's the first thing we would want to do, and so let's look for uh, some sources with Georgia land records. Might go to the wiki first of all. Okay. Research wiki. I'm going to go ahead and do Georgia land records there. So here we are. Oh, yeah, same. Yep. And we can start looking at those Jan Georgia land records to see if this, this family shows up with anybody. That's how they would have had to have gotten their records, one way or the other, depending on the mm -hmm. time period. They would have either gotten them through a head right and boundary area or a colonial right or a Georgia land record right. There's also the Georgia Cherokee rap, uh, land lottery that occurred in 1832. And what that was is they drove the Indians out, the all of the tribes there, and they had what was called the Trail of Tears, of course, and they went across, they were sort of driven across the country and to settle in Oklahoma. So okay. this is the, that's the history. And yeah. It's just a matter of, of looking at. So let's look at the chair at the land lottery records first and just you can see how they look. Okay. Here you can do a search on Ancestry Forum. So you can you go Dotson. Yeah, just look at Dotson. So there's not very many Dotson searches, a couple up there. Mm -hmm. There, try the next level of records. That would be the, the Cherokee land records. Oh, okay. So they're not. They're not going to come up right at this look. You probably would want to. I don't, that's probably not linked correctly in the wiki. Um, okay, maybe. So if you if we do a lip search for them, we should find Cherokee land records rather than. You search for that in the catalog. Yeah, Georgia Cherokee land lottery would be the they the concept. Okay, the other concept, of course, it's going to be it's fairly simple is to look at the census records we have, which are fortunate because with a number of census records, they will tell us exactly where we're looking. Okay. Records. Can I go back to the earliest one? Whichever. Yeah. Okay. So Raven and, County, Georgia. Right. Raven County. So we're just going to go to Raven County and look in the catalog and see okay. what kind of land records and they that's have. That's my fastest Raven way there. I'll be there. Okay. Land, land and property, six collections. So there's, there's the records to search. Right there. Okay. Nice. Okay. Now, why why would you look at these records? Well, if they did get them from the lottery, or they got them, see the land lottery grants, eighteen twenty to nineteen o two, 
register the grants 1830 to 1841. See those records have about three quarters of the way down next to the last list. Up. Sorry, say which that, say that again. These the ones, land, yeah, the land lottery mm -hmm. grants. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's and they're probably not searchable. They're probably not uh, indexed. So if they are, it's a little mm. bit of a bonus, but probably not. Yeah, not. Nice. You're going to be looking at the deeds and searching through, but there's not an inordinately large number of them. Mm -mm. Okay. So it would it would be fairly, you know, it'd take an hour or two, maybe, to go through and just look for page by page, see if any of the people show up in those records in the county. The guess is they're going to. I, that would be a very positive, uh, opinion, my opinion would be very positive that there would be somewhere in there, there's going to be land records showing. Now, why would we want to do this? Number one is land records often identify the members, whoever owns the property, obviously, who gets the property, but they also uh, identify spouses um, most of the time. And they also have witnesses, and those may be relatives. They can be in-laws, they can be brothers, they can be anything uh, that are related. They're not always related, but that's very common. And then the third issue is that sometimes they recite. If this happened to come because of an acquisition that was owned by, excuse me, owned by um, his father, then there would be an explanation that I'm, this is me deeding my property over to my son. And in some cases, with a, I've we've run across whole pedigrees in there in the deed. They'll say, "Oh, this land was owned by Grandpa so and so, and it was conveyed to so and so, and then it was conveyed to so and so, and then basically it was conveyed to me, and I'm conveying it to my son and to his brothers and so forth." So, if you if you hadn't known about the you know the land lottery records, the Cherokee records. Would you have naturally turned to land records next anyway? Is that a natural oh, yeah, yeah, move for you any, in any region? Yeah, but see, the, yeah. the, the reason why I brought up the, Cher the Cherokee land lottery records is because you showed uh, an origin in Virginia with the father and a, somebody who was in North Carolina and ultimately ended up in, in Georgia. And the answer is, why? Hmm. Why did they move? And the answer is simple. George was giving away land all the time during hmm. that time period. Okay. It, it wasn't, it's kind of land, when they say land lottery, uh, they would make application for the land and then they may get granted the land. And the fact that your guy was was uh, living in Georgia and had, and died there basically says to me that he got land in one of those land uh, types of operations there. Okay, cool. And, and that that's the starting point. And then another, really important one to look at doesn't seem to be logical but it's bible records hmm. so back in our catalog yeah well so it, yeah we, it was in the wiki there on the list of okay the things you were looking at if you look over on the right side b up bible records okay and so there's the collections of bible records for georgia and and again, did your mind go there because this is the South and you know Bible records to be stronger here than yes. other regions? Yeah, they're, they're yeah. very common. Hmm. And they've been collected. So you can see here there's there's quite a few uh, collections of Bible records on different websites. Good. And that's okay. been helpful because that is one of the keys that I've had in the past to move to identifying the next step over because they carried the Bibles. That was the important thing. The Bibles were transportable. So they'll list everybody as they're coming mm -hmm. down. Okay. Which is a, a, an extremely good help in identifying who the parents are and who all the kids are. Okay. Good. So those are the, those are the first two kind of, of, of um, what do you might call it, first go places. Mm -hmm. And then the next place that you'll probably want to look at are Church records, if you, if they came from Virginia, the the predominant religion and in North and South Carolina was what we would call Episcopalians or Church of England. The, the people who came to Virginia 
to North Carolina, South Carolina, did not come there for religious freedom. They came there for land. Hmm. And they all brought the church with them. And so if you look at church records for Virginia, which is down there, yeah, there we go. You'll find that after 1900, they were not, but in the colonial period, it was Church of England. Now, Dotson is probably not, it doesn't sound Irish, Hmm. but it would be easy to check the origin of the name by going to find my past and doing your general search just at the top search all records and put in dots and see where the name comes from there's a, it's not a very common name hmm. and 120,000 okay yeah go to the world go to world down there where mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. go to ireland just click on ireland See that view that almost rules out Ireland as being a, a place. Okay. Those are probably all England. Northern Ireland anyway. England's Scotland. Yeah. Say, uh, so it's mm-hmm. not a common name, and it's definitely English as opposed to Scotland or Ireland. Okay, it's, interesting. It's not Welsh. It's not Welsh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you already, even, already know that from the look. I yeah. Don't even, yeah. I don't yeah. even think about that one. Yeah. yeah. So, as an English name, then you know that they were English. Now, here's the other part of it. The dates that you have so far are what you might call recent. So, the, the issue is whether the Dotson family uh, emigrated early to on or late. So now we can do a search to find out, get a kind of a, 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 a almost initially very quickly idea of whether or not we're looking in the right time period and the right dates. So go up and do a general search, like a Google search for okay. for Dotson genealogy, Virginia. Okay. Virginia. Mm-hmm. There's there's a whole website. It says it's Welsh. Don't believe it. <laughs> okay. The surname was first found in Cheshire. <laughs> they say it's <laughs> Okay. It's at Western Central England. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I have to read through that and see. Well, who... yeah. You can you can begin to see yeah. if there are. These are all the 1600s dots, and you know these. Are yeah. Way, way back. It's their way back. But. Okay. So the question is whether these people came, uh, were latecomers, just happened to come across from England at some point in time, or whether they were there originally. Now, if they were there originally, see, there's lots more dots and of different mm-hmm. parishes and histories and roots web. And so kind of to read through these gives you a an idea because you're you're basically talking about the surname in England in Virginia. But the number of people, because this is not like Smith or Jones, it's not a a name that has millions of people and you can never count on the fact that they're related. There's not that many people to start out with. So basically you can you can kind of give a get an idea that perhaps they, they either date back to the original Dotsons that came to Virginia, which would make sense because after mm-hmm. A couple hundred years, they didn't. Nobody had any land left to give their kids, which is another reason why they would keep going south. On the other hand, it's possible they came a little bit later, or even quite a bit later. Okay, I am curious if we search for, you know, instead of searching for Henry, I'm curious if I take out Dotson and just search in the 1840 census how many people we have. Yeah, yeah that's a very good idea. 685. Hmm. Well, if you you can kind and of we, get that down. See, a lot of those are in Kentucky. So if you put Virginia, oh, it's here, do the same okay. search, but put places Virginia. Because by the way, Kentucky's Virginia. You, you mm, yeah, that. good point. Yeah, so There's eighty-five in Virginia in eighteen thirty. Yeah, you're going to find. 
that there's not that big, big of a list of people to start to work with. 62 and 1820. Yeah, okay. so it really narrows down. Yeah, so what happens if this if this kind of backfired and I was going through this with, a, with somebody and they came up and their name was Tanner, for example, or whatever, and then they found I'm out a- that there's like 16 million people with that name and everybody all over the country has that name, then it's just sort of this this whole process is sort of um, obviated. I mean, you don't have to do this. You can you just don't touch that. And, yeah, yeah. You don't even worry about it. But here, because the name and because we already looked and saw that it was fairly uncommon, even in England or even and not at all in Scotland and no, not enough in Ireland to worry about. So basically, you know, and if it was, if you wanted to do the ones on Welch and kind of see if that actually pans out. That all right, we could. I mean, yeah, just to satisfy our curiosity, change it to Wales and see if there's 37. Yeah, so 30 yeah, tiny people. Yeah, yeah. No, no name that originated there would have that kind of, of number of people. Okay, good. Put, okay. put in, put in Brown instead of for well for Wales. Oh yeah, two thirty three. I, I hit enter when I shouldn't have, but there's two thirty three. Yeah, let's do that one more time. And Wales isn't that big. Now, the, yeah, you've got Dobson back. Yeah, two hundred thirty three thousand. Yeah, so that's okay. That's kind of the difference you're going to get with names, and that's totally not knowing where to go. In other words, Mm -hmm. you have only one mention at all that this person even had um, a connection with it. You've got to narrow the field down to a manageable place to start looking. Yes. Yeah. You can't, you can't just say, okay, well, he may have been born in California. No, you know, that's not going to happen. So you need to go through this kind of a process every time you're starting with uh, that kind of just to get an idea of if you're going to have a problem. And the other okay. thing we didn't look at, we should look at before we we get through to, is to look at the children, where each of the children hmm. were born. Okay. Yeah. So you can you can pull them up, I guess. Or you know, but, you know, just to, glancing on the subway map, I think they're all Georgia, but some of them don't have a county listed. Mm-hmm. So they all were born after he was in Georgia. Yeah. Okay. One other thing would be to good look at. You're going back. You're going back in time because you're looking for an ancestor. So you start with death, death records, marriage records, and then, well, don't worry too much about birth records. They, unless you have a church record to look at, you're not. Going okay. To the only birth records you'll find are be in, in Bibles or it'd be okay. in the South to find a birth record. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the earliest we have is he's 24, 1850, and he's got a young family. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and that if you look jump at, back to 1840 would be big. Yeah. If you look at Rabe, is it Raven County? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go to Raven County in the wiki real quick. And Go down and look at the list of when the Mer- see, birth records weren't kept until 1919. Oh, yeah. So a, dec- a century later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they weren't even uh, client birth general compliance for births wasn't until 1928. Uh, yep. So, so we won't touch that. Yeah. And I, I am so many times rather than come to this, I find people, sway- I, I got to say it, wasting their time looking uh, for a birth record. Okay. Because it's just not worth even bothering with if you're, and I mean in the South, there's other places. And church records, if there are any, would have, may have them if they were church going people and got their kids baptized like they would have. Mm-hmm. But civic records, yeah, not, we don't even look there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that kind Good. of covers most of that. Uh, let's go back just real quick and we can summarize what we what we need to do so okay. we have plenty of census records so we know the identity of henry dodson and his family there's not a problem mm-hmm. there basically what's happened is that uh, we're looking we've got to look beyond the the big record the big record sets the census records the 
uh, the vital records and cemetery records. And those are the ones that generally you can pick up for people like this that lived in the latter part of the 1800s. But if, as soon as you run out of that and you still haven't answered the question of who the parents are that you need to start looking for, first of all, it'd be a good idea to look for a probate record because that would confirm more of this information. But it might also identify the parents, his parents. Hmm. Okay. And then the second would be land and property records and Bible records and the other records that could potentially add additional information down there in the South. And I might mention also that it is a very high percentage of serious genealogical research in the South ends up with a trip to wherever you're looking. So you may end up going to, to Raven County and talking to historical societies and all sorts of people. More so than other regions? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Uh, most of the dedicated Southern researchers I've known over the last many years have been people who have spent a lot of time traveling around in the South and going to the courthouses, going to the historical societies, going to the genealogical societies, hmm. talking to people and trying to find out more. There's just less that's digitized? Yeah, well, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's one of the biggest problems. They're not only not digitized, they're usually not even available outside of where they're being kept. Oh, I see. So there's a lot of records that are not yet available out of the South. That's good to know. We'll have to take a trip sometime. Yeah, it's worth it. It's nice, beautiful country. Raven's up in the mountains, I believe. So it's uh, the corner of, I read about it. It's like one of the rainiest parts of Georgia and uh, up in the corner of Georgia near North Carolina. So that'd be interesting to go. Okay. Well, that, I think that covers it. All right, James. Thanks so much. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.